Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and today we're going to be working on the Jazz Miner. As previously mentioned on the channel, this household was struck by lightning and we lost a lot of equipment. This is one piece of equipment that was affected. To get into this Jazz Miner, this side plate here, whether it's the X4-Q, X16, doesn't matter, Dash Q, they're all uh, relatively the same. We got a couple screws on this side panel. So one here, one here at the bottom, two here on the back top right and then another one right here then this whole side panel will slide off and then we gain access to the internals now one of the things we noticed about this jazz miner was that the hash boards and everything will light up when power is applied um, some of the uh, daughter boards or control boards will work but the main control board will not even the power supply is getting power so I'm suspecting that this control board is shot out because the lightning strike went through the ethernet cord. It doesn't matter which ethernet cord I use, this uh, NIC or network uh, adapter will not kick on. So I ordered a control board and we are going to try to replace that one right there. So I suspect we'll probably need to remove the power supply. It looks like there's one screw there coming in through the top section that we might need to gain access to. Yep, sure enough. So this screw right here, and then we might have some screws on the back side right here. So four total to allow me to get some room, move that power supply a little bit. We might not need to do it because the control board is just below it, but you can see there's a sticker here uh, that obviously if I do this, it's gonna avoid the warranty, but I believe this thing's already outside of warranty. So it's not that big of a deal. So we're probably gonna, we might not have to move the power supply. But definitely disconnect these ribbon cables, power cable. Uh, there's a front panel connector right here and right here. Another one right there. And then we should be able to uh, take out that control board. And then you got two ribbon cables or four pin PWM cables going to the fans on the back side right here. And by the way, those fans can be replaced with Noctua fans. Uh, just make sure you're getting the slim 120s, not the normal thickness that we're used to on a computer so let me go ahead and start uh unconnecting everything and then we'll remove the control board the control board it's held in by four screws you got one here one there one right here in the corner and then another one right here those are the screws right there and to get some of these smaller connectors like these smaller red and black cables off uh, you got two of them with clips so just be careful and then you got one with not uh, or with none uh, so I just use the pliers ever so carefully do not want to tug and pull these out by their wires otherwise you'd be hating it you don't want to uh, break the pin out but now we should be able to carefully remove this control board and replace it with the new one that we just got well I say new but it's it's a second hand control board there we go and some of the wires, like these wires right here, run underneath the control board. So be careful when you're setting everything back in that you don't pinch anything. And we can see actually some of the screws. You see that guy right there? Those screws are holding in the secondary chassis that houses the hash board. So this metal frame that goes over the hash board is being held in by those screws. And we can see more of them down here in the very, very bottom. If it will focus, I guess it won't, but there you go. There's one there, and then there's one right there. Uh, and that will allow you to remove this outer shell um, and gain access to the hash boards. If you need to, you just obviously need to unplug the ribbon cables here and here, and then the power cables uh, up top and in the bottom. So now the new control board can get pulled out and set up. Here is our new control board, the components. Everything on this looks brand new. I don't see anything that sticks out to me, like any type of long-term usage or anything like that. Here's the old board. And they look pretty much the same. Uh, they even have the same markings, Jazz Miner. This little sticker here on the chip, which is a, uh, I believe a Xilinx zinc chip 
yep, sure enough is. The XA7Z020. And then I believe these are our memory chips right here. Let's see if we can get some numbers off of there for you. ICK15D9PSK. Yeah, they're Micron. Micron memory chips. And then somebody tell me what that is. That's also Micron. But see if you could tell me what that is in the comments. So anyways, we're going to get the new board uh, installed, mounted, and let's see if we can get this system rebooted and connected via the network. Just note to self, these little red and black connectors only go in one way. If it doesn't go in smoothly, do not force it. Same thing with the 6-pin and the PWM. And then these connectors originally were in the bottom and middle slot, not the top, okay? Not sure if the top slot is for a specific reason, but I know on, for example, the Epic Control Board for the Wets Miner, you're not supposed to use slot zero. It's only uh, one, two, or three. So just be mindful or do what I did and take a picture before you uh, take apart everything. So that way you know the exact order that needs to go back in. All right, we're all plugged up now. And it's probably going to need a fresh install via the micro SD slot in the back, but we just want to make sure that everything powers on. So I just left the power switch in the back. Good, we got hash boards going green, control board in the back going green. Question is, is the NIC starting to blink? We got green and fault. Probably going to go to fault here in a second because uh, we got to program it. And we have a blinking NIC. That's good to see. So now we just need to use the micro SD slot to go ahead and program this jazz miner, reprovision it, get this control board thinking and communicating with everything. All right, believe it or not, I did not have to flash or put a micro SD card or anything in there to uh, flash the control board. I already had everything in there. Probably do need to update it, but logging in with the default password root root, and I already had set up the miner the reason it was flashing red is obviously because there was no mining config uh, set up so if we go to the miner section all my pulls and wallets are configured we're also on etc hash instead of eve hash at the 200 megahertz and we are running like a charm baby yes the hash rate hasn't shown up yet but if we scroll over to the right we see that we got 44 works zero accepted so we're just waiting to confirm some shares the fact that we're even able to log into this machine is a huge success because originally after the lightning strike, the NIC would not power on or show any signal whatsoever, data transmission, and we weren't able to connect to the miner uh, and it would just say red fault. So everything is back up and running. As we could see here, everything is nice and lit up and all it was was the control board. Um, so. So if your NIC or your SD card reader uh, goes bad, you gotta replace the entire control board. Um, if it doesn't read the hash boards for whatever reason and you replace the ribbon cable, it might be the control board. Not sure what other troubleshooting steps you could do, but glad to see that the Jazz Miner is back up and running. So anyways, that's gonna do it for today's video. Do me a favor, hit the like button on the way out. Make sure to get subscribed, hit the notification button to stay up to date as well as check out additional links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Thermal's looking pretty good for right now.